Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you are enjoying this program, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. If you n- have not already, I do encourage you to check out my ebooks, All I Needed to Know I Learned from Columbo and All I Needed to Lo- Oh I Learned from Dragnet. Each examines the careers and history of seven great fictional detectives and policemen, as well as life lessons that can be learned from them. You can find them wherever fine ebooks are sold, or as audiobooks through audible.com or the Apple Store. Now it's time for this week's episode of File of Vance, the original air date June 13th, 1950, and the title is The Full Dress Murder Case. <laughs> Yep, gets pretty lonely pounding a beat in this neighborhood, Mr. Gorham. Glad to walk a little way with you. Oh, it's just the other way around, officer. Walking home alone at midnight in this section isn't my idea of fun. eh? (laughs) (laughs) You know pretty near all the characters around here, don't you? Uh, All of them that ever checked into the hotel I clerk at. That is, if you're charitable and can call it a hotel. Ah, poor fellas. I kind of feel sorry for some of them. Yes, some of them. Yes, fellas like... Uh, Johnny Edwards, uh, Boxcar Charlie, or, or Billy Duke. Nice boys who just never quite made it. They'll work, only nobody will give them a job. Well, Mr. Gorham, everybody's got their own problems. Yes, indeed, I... Some guys who oh, so look, look where? Well, o- over there, behind the ash cans, there's a, there's a body lying there. There is. Well, we'll soon see about that. No, be it... It's a body, all right. Oh. A body in a full-dress suit. Oh, that, that is all I need. I won't sleep for a week now. I've got to phone in a report on this right away. Oh, yes, yes, hurry. Some swell got himself murdered. But why did he have to do it on my beat? Officer, wait, wait just a minute. For what? I think I, 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 I know this man. Now, Mr. Gorham, you know a lot of the characters from around here on account of your job, but you think you know this fellow in the full-dress suit? I'm positive I know him. Evening clothes or no evening clothes, I know him. He stays at my hotel any time he has a buck for a room. The dead guy, all dressed up in a full-dress suit, is Boxcar Charlie. being district attorney vans if I can't have a siren on my car. Well, there's the little matter of seeing that guilty people are punished, that the laws are upheld, little things like that, Markham. I know. But I think this siren is a throwback to the days when I was a kid and wanted to be a fireman. <laughs> I wanted to be a streetcar conductor. <laughs> I'll have to have a bell put in this car for you. Oh, thank you. Well, there's a spot where they found the body, Vance, just up the street where the crowd is gathered. Glad I was with you when the call came in. The man definitely identified as a derelict, but wearing full evening dress when he was found murdered. Fascinating combination of circumstances. I thought you'd like it. Now, let's see what we can do about finding out who killed him. After you, Vance. Right. Surprising the crowd that'll gather at any hour of the day or night just to see something unusual. Oh, these people have plenty of time. Excavating work doesn't start for seven hours or so, and they have to watch something. That's so. Let us through, please. I'm sorry. Let us through. If you don't mind. What happened? Please, just out of my way, please. Thank you. Hello, officer. I'm District Attorney Markham. Oh, I, I recognize you, Mr. Markham. I'm Riley, 23rd Precinct. I found the body. Yes, I know. I see it hasn't been removed. I'm waiting for the men from the morgue now, Mr. Markham. While we're waiting, is it all right for me to examine the body? Go ahead, Vance. It's all right, Riley. He's Philo Vance. Oh, oh, Vance is it. Go, go right ahead, Mr. Vance. Thank you. I don't think I'll be more than a few moments. Right, Vance. 
Officer. Oh, yes, sir? Your report said the dead man lived at a very cheap hotel down in this section. Yet, when you found him, he was wearing evening clothes. That it did, Mr. Markham. And don't ask me to explain it, because I can't. You won't have to, officer, but I think I can. What was that? Vance, you took one look at the body, and you can explain why a down-and-out individual would be wearing a dress suit. Not only that, but I think I have an idea where I can start Please, looking for the killer of our friend Boxcar Charlie. Now, Vance, I've seen you do astounding things, but never anything like this. How could you possibly find a clue so quickly? Charlie was stabbed, but the knife isn't here, so it couldn't be that. It isn't. And I never saw Charlie while he was living, if that's what you're thinking, Markham. I'm not thinking anything at the moment. All right, my friend, let's leave it just that way. Personally, I never saw anything like this. All right. You're pretty smart, Mr. Vance. Thank you. Now I'm going to investigate the clue I found, which will give me an idea of just how smart I am. Okay, bum out. Uh, Come on, out. Just a cup of coffee, George. Just a cup of coffee. Get out, I said. This is a diner, not a free lunch joint. (laughs) Willie, open the door. I gotta toss this guy out of here. Come on, come on, come on. Out! Well, that's it. Yeah. Get rid of him, Willie. Maybe. Maybe he'll be back. I doubt it. Suppose we get organized on that gimmick we got going. Everything's all set up for us. Uh, I don't think so. I got another idea about that. What's the matter with you? Do you have to argue about everything? It's the use of living if you can't argue. No fun in agreeing with people. And it's no fun in listening to you doubt everything either. Look, let's get something straight. <laughs> as if anybody as crooked as us could get anything straight. There you go again. Anyhow, here's something you can't argue about. Fox guy Charlie is dead, ain't he? Mm, it seemed like that when I stuck a knife in him, but I ain't no doctor. I ain't sure, you know. I am. He walked into this lunchroom of mine at the wrong time. He heard something he shouldn't have heard, and he had to go. Maybe he didn't hear nothing. We ain't sure he did. We couldn't take any chances, could we? Now, don't get sore at me. I killed him, don't forget. Anybody traces that knife and back to us, we can forget about this place and that big plan we got and everything else. Nobody's going to do that. Don't worry. Yeah? Who's doing the contradicting now? Okay, Georgie. We got rid of the one guy who might interfere with us. We got clear sailing from here in. It's going to be happy days are here again for us unless... Now what? Unless somebody gets hep to what we're doing. And then it ain't happy days are here again. It's goodbye forever. Hello, District Attorney Markham speaking. Anybody that calls the DA's office at 2 o'clock in the morning doesn't rate as dignified an answer as that. (laughs) Hello, Vance. (laughs) Hello. I thought you'd come right back to your office when I left you after we found that dressed-up body. And I thought you'd get in touch with me, so we both thought correctly. That's right. It's a little difficult getting information at this hour, but I think I've finally come up with something. Something like what? Something like what I promised you. A place to start investigating the murder of Boxcar Charlie. I thought you knew that when you looked at the body. I had only a general idea. It isn't that any longer. What do you mean? Gone, like all good ideas, from the general to the particular. Oh. I just thought I'd let you know I'm on the way to a certain diner. (laughs) You hungry, Vance? For information. I've been to five diners since I left you. According to the phone book, there's only one more particular diner left in town. One? Apparently, I've left it to last. And like most of the cases we've had in this office, when it comes to a lead on a killer, I've left it to Vance. Keep you pretty busy, don't they, Connie? Oh, I don't mind. This mission is part of my life, George. I like helping people. Why not? Oh, and I want to thank you for bringing those sandwiches. The men will appreciate it. Oh, I was glad to do it. What's the use of running a coffee shop if you can't give away the food you're not going to sell anyway? (laughs) How's the big thing coming? Oh, the benefit? Yeah. Better than I had any right to expect. Everybody's helped. They announced it over the radio. The newspaper men have been wonderful, and people are actually buying tickets. Good. I bet I've sold more than $1,000 worth today alone. Why not? It's a good cause. A mission like the one you run here helps people. It helps unfortunate people. Oh, but the others are being very kind. Well, why shouldn't they? Well... After all, what are other people except unfortunate people who got a break? Oh, philosophy from a coffee shop owner. Well... With George, I never believed it. 
Anyhow, I've got $3,000 in cash right here in this envelope, and it'll be $10,000 by tomorrow, I hope. All I can say is you're a pretty nice gal, Connie. Personally, I... Oh, here comes a customer, George. Excuse me. Oh, lady, I, I'm a poor unfortunate. I sure would like a cup of coffee. Maybe if you had something to go with it, I'd like that, too. Well, that's what we're here for. It's rather late, but I just got in a fresh batch of sandwiches, so if you'll sit down... Gee, I'll... sure. Thanks. Uh, uh, join me, bud? No, thanks. Connie. Yes, George? Don't you think you ought to put this money in a safe or a bank or something? Oh, not tonight anymore. I haven't got a safe and the banks aren't open. Besides, nobody knows how much there is in this envelope. Well, 3,000 bucks is about a dope. Really? Hey, that George, bum is going for it. Stop him, George. George, hey, stop him. Bet I will. Give me that let envelope. Let go, man. Let go. I'll let go, all right. This. Oh, George. Oh. I didn't want to do that, but... Then you didn't want to lose that three grand either, did you, Connie? No, or I'll get some water for this poor fellow. Oh, and, and George, it, it was good of you to stop him from stealing that money. Nobody touches that money, Connie. You mean nobody but me, of course. Sure. That's exactly what I mean. <laughs> joint is open, but nothing is going on. The boss is out, and I don't sling no hash. I wasn't looking for food. And what are you doing here at 2.30 in the morning? Slumming? Could be that. You look like something from uptown. Huh? It doesn't matter where I come from, does it? Maybe it does. Now, don't be difficult, friend. I'm Philo Vance. Huh? That name mean anything to you? No, but I'm glad for your sake you got it. Everybody's got to have some kind of a name. Of course, you overdid it now, a little. Now, listen, you. No, hey, the coat. Don't bend the coat. Relax. Okay. What do you want? I want to know whether you ever heard of a man they called Boxcar Charlie. Not that I remember. He never came in here? Not that I know of. You around this place very often? Not so you could notice. Where's the owner? George, I don't know. Out somewhere, I guess. I see I'm not getting anywhere. Is there anything you do know, my friend? Yeah, sure. Try me on that two and two business. Look, I've had no sleep and I've very little patience left. Get me a cup of coffee. Hey, why don't you drink milk, huh? It's better for growing boys. Now beat it, Sonny. I'm awful busy doing nothing. I've got nowhere to go. You don't get out of here. They'll be digging you a place to go. Now beat it, I said. That's right, you did say that. Now, is there any way you know of making me leave? Yeah, just one very simple way. I ask you nicely, and then this. Ah, that was better than walking around the reservoir. Gave me some exercise, but very little else. What else did you want? What happened to Willie? Willie is out. You, George? Yeah. What hit him besides you? The truck that just happened to be going through your coffee shop. That's a shortcut, I guess. More trucks go through here. George, I've got some questions to ask you. Isn't that funny? I got no answers. I'll look around for some if you like. Now, don't you be cute. Why should I answer anything you ask? Where we are. Look at Willie. That a good enough reason? What'd he do? Argue with you? Take the other side or whatever you said? He always did that. You shouldn't have got sore. The next time I feel my emotions carry me away, I'll remember to ask your permission. Yeah, do that. George, I'm Philo Vance. I want to know something about a man called Boxcar Charlie. Who? Well, here we go again. George, remember Willie here? Oh, Boxcar Charlie. Why didn't you say so? What do you want to know about him? When did you see him last? Yesterday sometime. Why? He was knifed to death earlier tonight. He was? Yes. Well, ain't that too bad. Why, he didn't have very much to live for, though, did he? What are you, detective? Not exactly. Well, in that case, if I was you, you know what I'd do? Should I? Yeah. If you're smart, you'd follow your nose right out of here. It's the only way I know of keeping it out of a business that don't concern you. This is District Attorney Markham. The full-dress murder case opened with the finding of the knifed body of boxcar Charlie, derelict. When discovered, 
Charlie's body was clothed in full evening dress, which led Philo Vance to announce he knew where to start looking for the killer. Vance told me that a certain diner would supply a clue. But how he arrived at that, or what happened at the diner when he went there, I have yet to find out. Vance is here, however, and I'm about to... Vance, I have a theory about the evening clothes. Have you, Markham? Yes. Boxcar Charlie wasn't a tramp. He was living in the slums for some reason. Actually, he lived a double life and was known by quite another name in society. That would account for his full dress. Yes, it would. Well, then you agree that what I believe is possible. Oh, definitely. Of course, I haven't done any investigation along those lines, but it is possible. If you haven't investigated, it's because you're on an entirely different and chances are a much more logical angle. Well, it is different, I'll tell you that. Will you also tell me what it is, what other reason there could be for a broken-down character to be wearing top hat and tails? No, I will not. Not yet. But I must very shortly. Well, that's something. And by the way, why must you? Because you'll find out for yourself very shortly. That's interesting news. Tell me what you found out at George's diner, would you, Vance? I think I found out who killed Charlie. Hmm, just like that. Yes. I have several reasons for thinking that. One of them being the fact that it was so hard to get information about Charlie from the owner of the diner and his friend, Willie. How do you know they knew him? That I've got to keep to myself until I'm sure they did. Remember, I said I only think I know our killers. When I'm sure and when I find why Charlie was killed, I'll let you know. And let you in on how I know. Connie? Brought you some fresh coffee from the shop this morning, Connie. Oh, thanks. Would you set it down right there, please? Sure. Thanks. Guess how much came in this morning? A lot, huh? Mm-hmm. Eight thousand dollars, George. I've got over eleven thousand dollars right here. Isn't it wonderful? Mm. I'll be able to build a sleeping dormitory and put in a kitchen and oh golly, I think people are nice, don't you? Some of them, Connie. I still think you ought to put that money in a safe place. Oh, I will. As soon as someone comes in to relieve me, I'll go to the bank. Oh, it was wonderful opening those letters and seeing all the money that... Hold everything, you two. What? what? George, he's got a gun. George! What's the matter with your boyfriend, lady? Can't he talk? What do you want? This is a mission. There's nothing here you can steal. I wouldn't say that. I'll take that envelope on that desk, lady. Oh, no, 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 please. That, that isn't my money. It belongs to me. It's the... going to belong to me. No. That's all I care about. Now, hand it over. George! Okay, okay, Connie. Now, look, you. That money is charity, though. It's supposed to help poor people. <laughs> What's the matter? You think I'm rich? Give me that. Oh, no. Yeah, now that's better. Now, both of you be nice and quiet for five minutes. No, you and don't. I... Hey, hey, I knocked the gun out of his hand. Grab it, Connie. All right. Oh. 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 You're not grabbing any gun, lady. George. Ah, hold it. I got my gun back, and you got your boyfriend oh, on the please, floor. Please, please. Now, see that he stays there for a few minutes, and you stay here, too, to take care of him. Which will be also taken care of yourself. Now, over ten grand already, Georgie, and I ain't through yet. I'll be over eleven thousand. I don't think so. Again, he don't think so. Don't you ever agree with anything, Willie? Not if I can help it. Yeah, yeah, one thing. What's that? That is a pip of a shiner you got on your right eye. Mm. <laughs> I didn't know I could hit so hard. You know, when I clipped you with the mission, Georgie, I wasn't trying to hurt you. You didn't. I fake getting knocked out, and you know it. Well, then what's with the eye? That's smart, Alec. Philo Vance has been around, hasn't he? I suppose he hears about the stick-up of the mission and starts putting two and two together and finds I was at the mission when a hole-up took place. Oh, so you gave yourself a black eye. Smart guy. Uh Uh-huh. And on you, it don't look bad. Big joke. Hey, now, where did I stop counting? Uh, it was over 10,000. I don't know the exact figure. I well, would call it 10,000 and 20. That was about it. Hey, Georgie, somebody's trying the door. Oh, shut up and he'll go away, whoever it is. Come on, open up in there. I heard you talking. Open up. Hey, that sounds like Vance. Yeah, for once, I wish I could argue with you. You better open up as soon as I stash this money out of sight. Okay, get rid of it. I'm going to open the door. All right. Hold it, I'm coming. Okay, Georgie, let him in. Okay. Hello, Vance. Hello. Aren't you open for business? Does it look like we are? No. I came over to see you about that holdup at the mission, George. I understand you were quite a hero. Well, are you back again? Apparently. Right at the moment, I want to talk to George. Any objections? 
Uh, not from me, no. I thought you were investigating Boxcar Charlie's murder, Vance. How come a stick-up interests you? There might possibly be a connection, you know. <laughs> That's a lovely eye you have. Like it? Maybe you'd like one to match. Willie would talk you out of trying. But I'm hoping he won't if you know what I mean. Have any trouble seeing out of it? Not a bit. My left eye is awfully good. Well, you're here, Vance. I'm still waiting to find out why. Just to get your story of the holdup. What story? Guy came in with a gun. He grabbed the envelope with the money in it with his left hand. He started backing away when I knocked the gun out of his mitt. Clipped me while I was trying to grab the envelope, and that's all. It probably ain't, Vance. Ask him more questions. I really don't have to, Willie. I'm quite certain I know all the answers now. <laughs> Connie here, and I have been waiting quite a while for you, Vance. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, Markham. My apologies, Miss Connie. Quite all right. But I wanted to be very sure of my ground first. And are you now, Mr. Vance? Yes. I know George and Willie killed Boxcar Charlie. I know why they did it. Oh? And I know both of them were in on the plan to rob your mission of the benefit money. We don't have to know very much more than that to make our arrest, Vance. I'm still waiting to find out the reason Boxcar Charlie was dressed in evening clothes, by the way. I'm so glad he was, Markham. It made things so much easier. Not for me. Well, Mr. Vance, if you know who killed Charlie, if you know it was Willie and George and you know they both robbed me, what are you waiting for? Why don't you let Mr. Markham arrest them so I can get that money? I want you to try and get it without our having to arrest them, Miss Connie. What? You, uh, you took the word right out of my mouth, Miss Connie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be mysterious. What I meant was that if you'll do one thing for me, Miss Connie... Yes? We'll have two killers in custody before nightfall. Sure, I know where George lives, Miss Connie. I sure am anxious to do something for you on account of all the coffee you give me at the mission. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Just point out the house to me. If well, you... it ain't really a house. It's uh, kind of like a basement. Well, where... It's right here. It oh. is right there, Miss Connie. Only I sure hope you ain't going to get tangled up with him. I sure hope you ain't, Miss Connie. I'll be all right. And thank you very much. It's all right. It's sure all right. I'd sure like to come over to the mission sometime. Any time at all. Yeah? Who is it? It's me. Connie from the mission. Well, I never expected you here. I know you didn't. Hello, George. Hi, Willie. You're all we need here. Of course, I'm delighted to have you visit me, Connie, but I can't think of any reason why you're here. I can. I think Willie's got something. He said it. Look, George, you don't think I fell for that phony hold-up, do you? I know Willie didn't hit you hard enough to knock you down. I let him grab that money. And now I'm here for a cut. Oh. For once, I agree with you, George. I have a little information, boys. Philo Vance knows the whole score, too. And if you don't, Lamb, you two characters are cooked. So you're not the big-hearted dame who only lived to pass out coffee to bums, are you, Connie? You want to talk about me or you? All right, all right. Vance knows you killed Boxcar Charlie, and he knows Charlie probably overheard you two planning the stick-up, and so you killed him. Oh, that Vance, how could he know that? That ain't important. Connie, you've earned your cut, and you'll get it. Fine. Now, can you stall, Vance, if we make a three-way cut of the dough we got? Maybe. And I think I know how Vance located us. But does he know we faked that hold-up, Georgie and me? He sure does. How could he know that? We didn't do anything. That's a matter of opinion. Vance. And District close? Attorney Markham. Yes. Oh, how well did I do, Mr. Vance? Hey, what is this? Oh. Snapping off the lock on the door so we could get in was excellent, Miss Connor. Hey, that dame was a phony, a phony. How do you like that? And these characters heard us admit we killed Charlie. The window, Willie. Let's get out the oh, window. No, no, you don't. Grab Willie, Markham. Oh, right. Oh, 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 oh. One down. How are you oh, doing, Markham? Uh, oh, watch. <laughs> Well, I'd say you were doing very well. And now, Miss Connie, your money is probably in this place oh, somewhere. I hope so. I think we'll be able to find it and officially close this case. Oh, no, you don't, Vance. No? Why not? First, I want to know how you tracked Boxcar Charlie's murder to George and Willie and how you knew that holdup was faked. All right, Markham, I'll tell you. But let's take George and Willie downtown first, and I'll tell you how I knew second. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Mark, you've been puzzled as to why Boxcar Charlie was wearing a full-dress suit when he was killed, aren't you? Among other things, I am puzzled about that, yes. Well, when I saw the full dress he was wearing, I noticed there were two worn spots about an inch and a half wide on each shoulder. Now, what would make worn spots like that? I haven't the slightest idea. I thought it might be from a sandwich sign that was being carried around. The straps from the sign would wear down the cloth just that way. That still doesn't tell you anything. Or rather, it doesn't tell me anything. I believed that if the man were in evening clothes, there had to be a reason for it. I believed he was carrying a sign advertising something to do with high hat or full dress. I looked in the phone book. Yes, I remember you are telling me you used the phone book. I did, and found a number of high hat diners. Uh Uh-huh. Five of them, to be exact. I investigated them all until I found George's place. It sounds very simple now when you tell it. Do you mind telling me how you knew the holdup at the mission wasn't on the level? Not at all. According to Miss Connie's story and George's, he was standing facing the masked holdup man yes. and was trying to get the envelope with the money in it out of that individual's left hand. That's right. Then the holdup character allegedly hit George in the eye and dropped him. That's the story George and Connie told. Certainly, but George's eye made it a lie. You see, in that situation, the holdup man must have hit George in the left eye. Yes. Yet it was George's right eye that was black. An indication that somewhere along the line there was something a little bit spurious. No doubt about that. George probably blackened his own eye to make his story and Connie's corroboration really stand up. Yes. Your theory of why George and Willie killed Charlie has been borne out by their confession, so I guess that's the end of them. The end of them and of the full dress murder case. <laughs> Welcome back. I would comment on the siren on Markham's car, but at this point in the series, that would be just way too easy. So I'm going to let that one go. Once again, I am impressed by the prodigious pugilism of Philo Vance. I mean, we have a lot of tough guys in old time radio, but I almost would bet that Vance has been in more fistfights than them all. Or at least has started more fistfights. I mean, some of these hard-boiled private eyes, like Pat Novak for Hire, get grabbed every episode and have somebody start beating on him. But with Vance, he just walks in looking for a fight, and he seems to find one, and also walk away with an impressive one-loss record. I don't have time to come up with fight statistics for old-time radio detectives, but I would love to see them if anyone ever saw that as something that was worthwhile to do. Overall, though, I did think that this was probably above average for a Philo Vance story. None of the characters were uh, annoying in particular, and I thought the reasoning was solid. Although at this point, Vance does seem to rely a lot on uh, criminals adding unnecessary details to their story. And in this case, getting a black eye in the process. I should note that we are nearing the end of our time with Philo Vance. We only have three more weeks left, and then in four weeks, we will be visiting a series with newly available episodes. Now let's turn to listener comments and feedback. And we start with a comment by Ronser. 
Uh, regarding our discussion on the manicure murder case about fictional characters known only by their last name, in your discussion of famous detectives who are known only by last names, you forgot the most famous character in this category, Columbo. Once when he was asked what his first name was, he answered Lieutenant. That's a good point. I would say that there's a difference, say, between Columbo and also Quincy and Philo Vance in that their last name isn't known. Although, there were actually goose on both series that hinted at last names that were never confirmed or intended to be the case. Uh, on Columbo, for example, there was a close-up of the driver's license that showed his first name is Frank. And on Quincy, there was a paperwork that showed Quincy's first initial was R. Regarding MacGyver, Nona writes, MacGyver's friends would call him Mac in private, and we don't learn till the last season that his first name is actually Angus. I don't know if I was watching as much in the last season. I do remember finding out somewhere that his uh, first name was Angus. And by my reckoning and remembrance of the series, I think that MacGyver's best friend was Pete Thornton. And he called him MacGyver pretty much everywhere. And so there may have been some people who called him something else like Mac. Which would be an understandable nickname. So that may limit the number of members in Philo Vance's club of people who have a known first name but are never called by it by anyone. Appreciate the comments and it's been so many years since I've seen MacGyver but I have such great memories of that series and would love to watch it again. And I am in no way referring to the remake. Just saying that right here. Angel writes in, I want to slap Vance. Then I realized I ought to slap myself. Okay, uh, thanks. All right, well now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Wendy, Patreon supporter since May 2019, currently supporting the program at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Wendy. And that will actually do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And be sure to rate and review us wherever you download us from. We will be back next Thursday with another episode of Philo Vance. And next Saturday we'll be bringing you Crime Fighters. But join us back here tomorrow for the conclusion of the Clinton matter where... Come here. Why not? Pretty cold weather to be out so late at night. Yeah, but then I've got a lot to do. Uh... You've been in to see Mr. Hobb? Yeah. How's Richard these days? I wouldn't know. I only spoke to Mrs. Hobb. I see. Lovely girl, isn't she? Well, she's a little sad right now. Her husband's missing. He left town during the fire yesterday. Do tell. Yeah, I have a feeling he might have been ordered out of town. Sooner or later, people will be asking the building inspector embarrassing questions about their school. Uh-huh. Were uh, you going to ask him some some embarrassing questions, that is? Yeah, yeah, sure I was. I was going to ask him why he passed it. I was going to ask him how much he was paid to pass it. I was going to ask who paid him to pass it. And then I was going to ask him to make a statement. I, I figured you might have had something like that in mind. Yes. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Mr. Vickery. I hope I see you real soon in jail. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.